Come on, worship him. Come on, if you need to, repent. Say, Lord, I've put some things in front of you. Got my priorities wrong. Just lift your hands right now and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm, I'm making it about you. I'm rededicating myself to you, Lord. Everything, everything, Lord, is about you. We thank you, Lord, for your lordship. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for the relationship you gave us through your son, Jesus Christ. We give you all the praise for that. We thank you that we're your sons and we are your daughters, Lord. We're children of the Most High God. And for that, Lord, we are here to praise and thank you for. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Will you give the Lord a great big hand of praise? Come on. Praise him today. Hey, listen, we got a lot going on here. Um, September the 17th, Back to Church Sunday. And uh, so, yeah, just make, make sure you invite people out, be a part of that. Friday, we're going to be out praying, uh, or yeah, praying for people. And uh, so, let me just see here. That, uh, yeah, next Sunday, next Sunday. So, just want to encourage you to invite people next Sunday. Listen, the statistics for people to come to church and stay when you invite them personally are like 88%. 88%. It's just, it's just pretty wild. So get out there and invite people to come to XL Church next Sunday. And then this Friday from 6 to 7, we're going to have drive-through prayer. And uh, you want to be a part of that. And also men and women's meeting is coming up uh, this month as well. So encourage you, invite people in Jesus' name. Also, I want to thank everybody who helped with the funeral last Sunday with uh, Spanky going to be with the Lord. So appreciate everybody helping with that. Will you find some people, shake some hands, and let people know that you are glad to see them today? Come on, will you do that? Come on, get out from where you're standing. All right. Praise the Lord. We're going to worship God now in our giving. And listen, if you haven't joined the giving family, and those of you that are watching online, uh, join the giving family. You say, how do I join the giving family? You start tithing. You start giving. Amen to Excel Church. And so let me read a scripture um, right now. Psalms 37, 25. And uh, this, this is, I, I, like, I like this scripture. It says, I was young and now I'm old, 
Yet I've never, never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. Verse 26, they are always generous, God's people, and lend freely. Their children will be blessed. Going back to verse 25, I was young, now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Those that are righteous are those who are in right standing with God, or they're doing it God's way. They're doing it the right way. Now, if you're not doing it God's way, you can be a child of God and not do it the right way, God's way. He has a system. He has laws. He has principles that if you'll apply those principles, those laws in your life, like tithing and, and, and sowing and loving, amen, then, then and forgiving, if you'll do those things, God promises you, you'll never be forsaken. You'll never be out there on the side of the road begging. And your children, not only will you be blessed, but your children will be blessed. So let's get excited about the things of God. Amen. Let's learn how to prosper God's way. So let's stand at this time. If you're making a check, make it out to XL Church. You can give on the debit card and credit card machine in the back. Also, bring it by the church if you like. If you're watching online, go to our website or right there at Facebook, you can give. And uh, let, me, let me say right here, we, we now have uh, our, a YouTube page, so you can go there, and uh, that is um, at XL Church, the, at XL Church NC, at XL Church NC, and uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's just the, the, the graphics are a lot better on that platform, but we're also streaming live, and uh, we encourage you uh, to also go to our Facebook page. But we are now on uh, YouTube. So let's thank the Lord. Come on, let's lift up our tithe and offering before the Lord. Father, we worship you today. We thank you, Lord, for adopting us, bringing us into your family. Lord, we were alienated. We were separated from you. We, we had no relationship with you. Now you call us your sons and daughters, your children, and, Lord, you also have given us an inheritance, and we want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice, for enduring, for enduring the cross, for making it through, for resurrecting from the dead and acquiring our salvation, our sonship, our daughtership. And we thank you for that, Lord. We are so grateful and so thankful. So we bring a portion of what you have given us, and we return it to you, Lord, as an act of expressing our honor, expressing uh, our trust, our thanks to you, Lord, our worship to you, and Lord, providing, providing for the kingdom of God. And Lord, we thank you that as we plant these seeds, you will provide for us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's bring our tithe and our offerings down right now and worship God now. Worship God as you give. And say this with me as you're coming forward as we receive today's tithe and offerings. We are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates, and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, come on, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decreased, blessings and increase, wisdom, revelation, favor, health, strength, courage. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs. I have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God to promote the gospel and reveal his goodness. Now give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, give him a shout of praise. He's worthy. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. You may be seated, and God bless you, as always, for your generosity. I know God will return it to you, I believe, a hundredfold. Amen? Praise God. Well, let's get right into the Word of God today as we manifest our sonship, our daughtership in the Lord. Open up your Bibles with me, please, first of all, to Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8. Verse 17, Romans chapter 8, verse 17. Are you learning anything from these messages? I mean, it has literally changed my life. Blessed be God's name forevermore. Romans chapter 8, I'll find it here in just a minute. Romans chapter 8, verse 17. And then we want to read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. And if children, and if children, we now understand we are children, right? We are God's sons and daughters. And if children, then heirs, we want to deal with that today, heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Heirs of God, Joint heirs with Christ. Holy Spirit, teacher of the church, ask for a special anointing today that you would touch the hearts and the minds of your people. <clears throat> my brothers and my sisters, your sons and your daughters, we need revelation. We need revelation, knowledge, wisdom today. Grace us today with your presence Bind every foe, every enemy, spirit of darkness, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And everybody say, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Say it again, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Last week we talked about accepting our sonship, accepting our Sonship and how that requires not just the Logos Word of God, but the Rhema Word of God. That is, that is God's Word being unveiled or God's Word coming alive. Today, today, and I'm going to stick close to my notes because I don't want to miss anything. Today we want to talk about accepting our airship. Being heirs of God, embracing that. What does that mean, being an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus? Are you ready? And listen, Ephesians 2.13 says, in Christ. Now, if you're born again, you're a believer, you are in Christ. In Christ, Jesus, you who once were far away, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So we were, before we accepted Jesus, before Jesus died, we were far away. We were separated from God. In other words, we learned we were, we were spiritual orphans, separated from God the Father. Slaves to this world system, to the prince of the power of the air. The God, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, calls him the God of this world. Satan is the God of this age. He's the God of this world system. So before we accepted Jesus as our Lord, we were We were orphans. We were slaves, again, to the world system. Are you with me? We, we had no relationship with God, our Father. Imagine that. Imagine that. No divine identity, no rights, no privileges, no authority, no ownership, no inheritance, no access to God. Hmm? Hebrews 4.12 says, let us therefore come boldly to the, to the throne of God, that we may obtain mercy and find or discover grace 
in time of need. But, but, everybody say, thank you, Father. But because of his love, his mercy, his grace, amen, he took us in. Lift up your hands and say, thank you, Lord. I quoted this last week, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved. It's not by works that we are saved, that we become children of God. We don't, we don't qualify as children of God. We don't earn it. It's by grace. It's by you accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It is by grace through faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that not of yourself. Not, not of yourself. It is a gift of God. You don't, you don't earn gifts. Gifts are freely given. Not of works. I mean, that, that just really says it all. It's, it's not because of your church attendance that you become a child of God. Hmm? Can I get one amen? amen? I said, can I get one amen? amen? We serve God because we are sons. Yeah. Amen. amen. We serve God because we are sons. We don't serve God to become sons. Amen. We serve God because we are sons. We want to serve his people. Hmm? Not of works. Not of works. Lest anyone should boast and say, look, look what I've done. Look at my great church attendance. Look how well I, I serve in the church or serve society. No, it's not of yourself. It is a gift of God. It is God's grace. God received us, made us a part of his family by adopting us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. And now... As we've learned, we identify as his children. <laughs> it's going to get good, I promise. Glory to God. But not only are we sons and daughters of God, we are heirs as well. This is a whole nother dimension of being a son of God. Galatians 4, 7 says, Therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. If a son, then an heir. An heir. My God, somebody ought to lift up their hands right now. Becoming a son, being a son, being a Daughter of God has its benefits, its privileges. Come on, somebody. And for so long, Satan has hidden this from the body of Christ. First of all, he's hidden our sonship, but he's also hidden our heirship, our inheritance. It's, oh, Jesus. Now, let's, let's define a few words here, and it'll make more sense. And heir, heirship is the legal right to receive, to receive money, property. Now, this is a secular definition, but it's, it, it, it applies to the kingdom of God. Or possessions from someone who has died. Now, now biblically, an heir is a person who is legally entitled to property and possessions of an estate upon the death of someone. Who, who, who died? Who, who died? Jesus, right? Right? An heir is a person who is legally, legally. Now remember, your son, <clears throat> when you were without God, you were an unbeliever, a sinner, a heathen. Right? You were not a son. You had no rights. No rights. <laughs> you got it, Aggie. No rights. No privileges. You were a Gentile. The Jews had to work for it. They, they had their sacrifices. The legal system. The law. Hmm? Now that's been abolished. Now there's no Jew, Tanya. There's no Gentile. We're one people. 
when we accept Jesus. Come on, somebody. So, so an heir is a person who is legally now, now that you are a son and a, or a daughter of God, a child of God. Now you, you, you have some legal rights. It's going to get deep. It's going to get heavy in here. And some people can't handle this. I'm just going to be honest with you. Hmm? Legal, legal entitlement to property and possessions. The kingdom, the kingdom. In other words, an heir is someone who has been assigned to receive an inheritance. Now that you're a son, now that you're a daughter, you have been assigned an inheritance. Oh, we're going to find out what that inheritance is, Mr. John. Glory to God. I'm telling you, Satan has hidden this from us. The term heir of God emphasizes what belongs to us through Christ. So we are a son, but now there are some things because we are sons, and I'm using that as sons and daughters. You get that, right? Now, now, now he emphasizes that what belongs to us through Christ, an heir is a person, is a person, right? Son or daughter of God who receives something of value from Father God. Hmm? So we're not just sons, but, but there's, there's, there's more to it. God also made us an heir. I would be happy just to be a son. But I'm really ecstatic about being an heir. Come on. That, that I'm, I'm not just left down here without something. Or I'm not just left here without the hope of Someday being joined with him in eternity without any devil. That's called heaven. Woo! The Greek word translated heir in Romans 8.17 that we read. Refers to those. Refers to those who accept. Who accept their inheritance by right of sonship. Selah. Think about it. Hmm? I said that Greek word actually means those who accept. It's not just left out there, oh, how beautiful, we're an heir. But it's those who say, that's mine because I am a son, a daughter of God, by grace, through faith in me accepting Jesus as my Lord. It's getting clear in here. It, it, it's coming alive. I, 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 I sense it. Glory to God. So first of all in this message, number one, we, we are, we are, as I've been trying to establish, and I'm going to Try even further to establish this. Number one, you are an heir of God. You are an heir of God. There are some possessions. There are some resources. There are spiritual and physical things God has blessed you with. This, 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 this is important to establish that you are an heir. Air. You've not been left. You, you've not been left here empty-handed, huh? For if you if 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 you don't know that you're an heir, and what belongs to you, it's difficult to receive. If not impossible to receive what God wants you to have, if you don't know that you are a son and you are an heir. How can, and you don't know what it is that you have, how can you receive? If you just think you're this some unworthy sinner, with no privileges, you won't receive anything from God. No peace, no joy. No love, no power, nothing. You might, you, you'll go to heaven, you know. 
But God wants you to enjoy heaven on earth. What do you mean? I mean, he wants you to enjoy heaven on earth. That's why he taught us to pray. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Hmm? Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Verse Thy, thy will be done, your will be done, your, your will, your will. Catch it now, catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it. Your will, your will, that involves airship. I'm going to show you something here. Be done on earth like it is in heaven. Heaven on earth. Sons and daughters of God, we are to manifest sonship. Remember Romans 8, 19 says that all creation is groaning for the earnest expectation of the manifestation of the sons of God. Why? So that we can bring heaven on earth. Establishing his kingdom. I know that's too much. (laughs) It's difficult. It's difficult. If you don't know, if you don't know your rights in the kingdom of God, the devil will push you around, beat you up. Come on. All day long, 24-7, 365, all day long. And that's what he's been doing to you because you didn't realize you were a son of God and he can't touch that. Amen. And if he tries, you have authority to beat him up. Put him in his place. If you're a son and daughter, you are an heir of God, a joint heir with Christ. Paul referred to believers as sons of God. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Paul Paul notes that we have been adopted into the family, the family of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 15 says, you have received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Again, the Greek word we've learned, that is Daddy. Have you been practicing that in prayer? Have you been coming to him and say, Daddy, Daddy. Oh, man. I'm just saying it right now warms my heart. Daddy. Not just Father. He is Father. I've, I've experienced him as Father. You know, when he just wants to maybe correct me. Or wants to get something in my spirit real firm. But what about Daddy? The soft side of Father. Hmm? My children don't call me Father. Although I am. Father, can I get something? No, it's dad. And if they really want to milk it, daddy. Oh, God. I'm telling you, when they say daddy, my heart melts. Pastor Self still calls her daddy. I don't call my daddy. Why? Because she has a revelation of him as daddy, not just father. Can I get one amen? So try it. Daddy, not father. You come in. God's not impressed with your religion. You put on your robe, so to speak. You put on your backward collar, figuratively speaking. And you try to impress him so he can say, son, no. It doesn't impress God. In fact, he regurgitates. He vomits. Lukewarmness, you know. But when you come to him and say, Daddy, whoo, oh my, you got his attention now. You're getting a revelation when you start saying, Daddy, Papa. Hmm? Lauren, when she was, I don't know, I don't know where she picked it up, three or four or something, five, for a few years. She just, said, she just called me Papa. And I just love that. Papa, where did she get that? Papa. But I'm telling you, every time she said, Papa, it did something in my heart. Hmm? Are you getting that? Abba, that's a whole different revelation. Abba. And when you go to Israel, I've been there twice. That's what the children call their fathers. They run around, Abba. It's the cutest thing. Abba. Not like dad or daddy or father that we do. Abba. Are you with me? So adoption indicates... 
that we are brought in as sons who have all the rights and privileges that would come as a member of the family of God. Even though you're adopted, you still have the same rights and privileges. Because we are adopted, we are also made heirs. That's like the cherry on top of the cake. You qualify as an heir when you become a son. (laughs) Oh, man. It, It gets better. So I can't think of it getting any better than this, Pastor. And I've been praying, Lord, I, I, I might need to soften this because I don't know if they can take it. You want me to soften it or you think you can handle? Because it's, it's, it's pretty strong. If I really say it, what I got a revelation of it, it, it I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's time or not. You might need to still need to be spoon fed and a little bit of milk. I, Y'all tell me, because I got this thing. Okay, so what belongs to the father has been passed down to his heirs. Heirs of God. Tell me I'm wrong. Are you an heir? Does, did the Bible say it? Am I making this up? So what belongs to the father, you are an heir of God. So what belongs to him belongs to you. And, and, and father, incidentally, means life source. He is our life source, Will. Our life source. Everything we need or want. He is the source. Everything comes from God. And he, he has no lack or shortage. Now, don't just think in terms of material things. I'm talking about spiritual matters as well, more so than anything, because those are the forces that change things, like love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Nothing, no law here on earth is greater than the laws of God when you put them in force. James 1.17 says every good gift, remember Father means life source, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness nor shadow or turning. That just means God doesn't change. He's, he, 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 he's not inconsistent. He doesn't deviate. He's not up one day and down the next. He's constant. My God. Every blessing in life comes from God. Psalm 24, 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Well, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. but, But you're his heir. He's passed that down to you. Psalm 50, 50, 50, verse 10 and 11 says, Boy, that went over like a lead balloon. I told you I didn't think you could handle it. (laughs) For all the animals of the forest are mine. Shut up, devil. Shut up, devil. This is not his earth. The world system is in his hand, but not this earth. For all the animals of the forest are mine. That's what God says. I own all the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountains. This is your papa. All the animals of the field are mine. And some old highfalutin, arrogant, worldly person think, this is my car. And some church folk, this is my house. No, no. I'm sorry, it's God's, it came from his earth. Until you know that, then he's given it to you that are humble. Haggai 2.8 says, the silver is mine and the gold. How wild these sinners have it. We got to go get it. 
Proverbs 13, 22 says, The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. His riches are so vast, so vast, so vast. They, they exceed human calculation. Hmm? Now, now, someone in the world may be taking care of your cattle, your silver and gold, but, but they're, they're, they're only estate managers right now. They're, they're, but, and you've got to wake up and say, that they're, 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 They belong to my father and I'm his heir, so that's mine now. <laughs> secondly, secondly, write it down, you're joint heirs with Christ. Now, you're an heir of God, but you're also a joint heir with Christ, Mr. John. Again, Romans eight seventeen says, if children, sons and daughters, then heirs. Everybody say, I'm a child of God. And say, I'm also an heir. An heir of God. Now watch it. And, and, not only you are, are you an heir of God, but you are a joint heir with Christ. Now what is a joint heir? I, I had to look at these, I had to look these things up because this, this was foreign to me too. A joint heir. It's a person who shares with another or others. I have five siblings, two of them gone to be with the Lord, but we were joint heirs in my mother's estate. We shared the estate. Hmm? So it, it's, in, it's the right to inherit a person's property. That, that's a joint heir. Hmm? So a person who shares with another or others the right to inherit a person's money, property, or title. Now, you did not inherit, inherit uh, um, I don't call you Jesus, I don't call you Lord, you don't call me Jesus, or you don't call, I didn't inherit that, but I did inherit his son, sonship, that title. Amen. I got to make it plain here. Believers have been given, been given, been given, been given the privilege of sharing in Christ's inheritance. Amen. Sharing his authority. If you're a joint heir, then you share in the inheritance. So it means he has authority, power, rights, freedom, benefits, resources, and blessings. Watch this. Colossians 1.12 says... Always thanking the Father, He has enabled us to share in the inheritance that belonged to His people. Ephesians 2, 6 says, And raised us up and made us sit together with Him. Now, not, not, not physically, but... It, but positionally, spiritually, we have been raised up and made to sit together. That's how the devil, with him in Christ Jesus, that's your inheritance. That's how the devil sees you. That's what he's kept from you. That, that you have been raised up with him. You are a joint heir. So the same thing that's in Jesus is in you. The same position. Not lordship, but sonship. <laughs> you with me? Raised up. Made to sit together with him. And the devil's been pushing us around much too long. Now, if you look again, again, uh, uh, again and again to... Romans chapter 8 verse 17, you'll find the word heir there three different times. Count it. Three di In other words, the, the, the apostle Paul wanted to emphasize heirship. Being heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Can you see that? Can you see that? So he's emphasizing heirship here. Jesus, Jesus, get this down in your spirit so you don't get the big head. All right? Jesus is the principal heir. See, he, he is, we'll see in Scripture, that he is 
uh, he is of the firstborn. First Jesus, then everybody after him. He's the principal heir, and we share in his inheritance. The Father has transferred everything over to Christ. I'm just going to give you the Bible. The universe has been given to Christ Jesus everything. Watch this, Matthew 28, 18. All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Remember, keep in mind, you're his joint heir. Hmm? Ephesians 1, 22, 23 says, God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. Now, he is the head, the principal heir. You're not the head. He is the head. You're not a Lord. You're not a God. He is God. He is Lord. But you are an heir. You are a son. Hallelujah. And the church is his body. His body, that's you and I. We are his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with him. The father, the father has transferred the legal right to the universe, including the earth, to his son, Jesus. The Lord Jesus, being the chief uh, principal heir of God's vast riches, now we are joint heirs with Christ, and we share in the inheritance that come that came to Jesus. Everything that belongs to Christ belongs to you. You're His son. <laughs> Are you a son? Are you a daughter? 1 Corinthians 3, 21, 23 says, So don't be proud of following the wise men of this world, for God has already given you everything you need. He has given you Paul, Apollos, Peter as your helpers. He has given you the whole world. Talking about you, given you the whole world to use. And life, even death, are your servants. He has given you all the present and all the future. All are yours. And you belong to Christ. Christ is God's. Luke 12, 32 says, It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Matthew 16, 19 says, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatever. That's some authority. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven by the principal heir, Jesus. He or honor what you bind or what you lose. The word literally means, bind literally means disallow. To loose means to allow. That's some authority. 1 Timothy 6, 17 says, Who gives us richly all things to Enjoy. Oh, glory to God. Let me close. Number three, I want to give you a glimpse of your inheritance. I'm not preaching heresy. I'm preaching the word of God. Sons and daughters of God. Everything I've said, I backed it with scripture today. It's up to you. To accept religion will keep you bound. Religion will keep you down. Religion will keep you a sinner. Working to qualify for God's love in his sonship and daughtership. And God says, I love you regardless. I love you so much. I'm giving you my son and everything I'm giving you, I'm making you a joint heir with my son. I, I'm doing that for you. God Almighty, it's blowing my mind. It keeps me up at night. A glimpse, a glimpse 
of our inheritance. Everything that belongs to Christ now belongs to us because we're in Christ. If any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm not a sinner anymore. I'm a son of God. I may sin, but I'm not a sinner. By nature, I'm not. Hmm. Our inheritance. A few more minutes. <laughs> this is good. This just came to me this morning. <laughs> uh, really last night, but I, I formed it today. Through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our inheritance. I mean, I can't, write, I can't give you everything, right? It just would be impossible. But our inheritance is, is written in His, in his will. Okay, okay. I said our inheritance is written in, 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 in His, His, capital H, His will. That our inheritance is written in His will. Okay, all right. So I went to the, the attorney, we, we did, my siblings, and they, they had a will. My mom had a will. It was, this, it was about, like, about this much, you know, several pages. Wasn't a big book, but it was so. That was that was her will. Hmm. Well, what is God's will? What is God's will? Oh, I didn't think you knew. That's why I'm here. It's His Bible. It's the Bible. the The Bible is His will. Let me, okay, let, 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 me, let, me, let, me just, let me just read a definition of a will. I looked it up this morning. Okay? You ready? A will, <laughs> Holy Spirit, is a legal document that states how a person wants their estate to be managed and distributed. It's not this, what he wants us to do, how we are to manage our life, how he wants things done, distributed, what is in here. How do I know that salvation, eternal life is mine? Because of his will. His will, this document. Again, a will is a legal document that states how a person wants their estate, how God wants his estate to be managed and distributed. Go into all the world and preach the will, preach the gospel, preach the good news. You are no longer a slave. You are no longer an orphan. You are a child of the Most High God, a son and a daughter with an inheritance. Inheritance. A will is important because it allows a person to communicate their wishes clearly and precisely. God gave us His Word, gave us the will to communicate to us precisely what He wants us to do and have. Watch this. As an heir to His vast estate kingdom of God we must study his will to know what belongs to us how to access it and and to and to and how to distribute and manage its resources my God, somebody lift up their hands and what an enormous responsibility we have as sons and daughters and we want to come and play church. Give me about an hour and a half and clap our little hand and leave and our life doesn't change when you get a revelation that you are a son of God and you are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. You won't play church anymore. This church will be filled. You'll run into the highways and hedges and compel people. You got to hear this. You got to hear this. You got to hear this. My God, 
I can't get into the inheritance right now. I'll do that next week. We'll show you some things that belong to you. But let me close again by, by I, I, I believe you got this now. Again, a will is a legal, this is God's legal document. It's all we have. This is, the new covenant is the will of God. The new testament is a covenant, is a will. Hmm? A will is a legal document that states how a person wants their estate. How God, I'm going to read it like this. How God wants his kingdom. Come on. Wants his kingdom to be managed and distributed. Shared. Given freely. A will. God's word is important because it allows us, sons and daughters, to communicate. To, that He would communicate through His Word, through His will, His, His desire, His wishes, clearly and precisely. Not making up doctrines, right? But His will being Understood clearly and precisely. Again, I'm, I'm closing. As an heir to his kingdom, we have to study the will, the word of God, to know what he wants from us, what, he ha- what belongs to us as a joint heir. How do I access it? That's going to be a lesson. How I'm telling you, how to manifest sonship will be another one. How to access what he left us. What We went to an attorney. I keep referring to this because I lived it. I didn't know anything about it. Nobody had died in my family. Right? So I had to, I had to we had to go. So we went to the attorney to help us interpret the will. To see how it would be. Right? How do, how do we access this then? Huh? And how to distribute and manage its resources. God blessed you, again, to be fruitful. So when he blesses it, what do I do with that? Do I, just, do I just consume it upon my own selfish, lustful, worldly, carnal, fleshly desires? Or, or do I do something else? Hmm? You come to church to find out what does the will say? You don't have to go over salvation over and over again to somebody who's been born again. You got that. Somebody that doesn't know him, you have to keep going it over and over again. But let's move on. Let's start let's let's move to the place where we are are living, manifesting the sonship. God, our sonship. Is this, is this good? I know I might have blown your mind, but please, please don't turn me off. Please, please go to the Lord in prayer <laughs> and say, God, it's a lot to chew on, but I'm going to chew on it. I want everything you got for me, Lord. Amen. Come on, somebody. And we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about what, things he what what's in that will not everything there's no way i mean we just be keep going on and on and on but we're going to talk about what we have amen and again one one of those things i'll just i'll just tease you a little bit eternity eternity that's part of our inheritance we're not going to hell we're not going to live in paradise waiting someday Maybe if we're judged properly to go to heaven, we, eternity is part of our inheritance. Glory to God. I'm going to show you in the Word of God. We're going to just look at the will. And see what the will says. It's up to you. You want it or not? Listen, next Sunday is back to church Sunday. I'm pleading with you. I'm asking you to invite people. People need to hear this. They need to hear the gospel. 
Amen. The God of this world, I quoted earlier, has blinded the minds of those that believe not, lest, or unless, the light of this glorious gospel, revelation, a light would come on. Once it comes on, you're going to live in a whole new realm with God. Amen. Would you stand? Lift up your hands and just thank him for the word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The world wants to keep you in its system. That's the fight that's been going on here. I said the world, the devil, the prince of the power of the air, wants to keep you in the system. It's a system. Hmm? It's education. It's in politics. It's even in the church. Not this church. Hmm? You with me? He wants to keep you in the system. He wants to keep you down. He doesn't want you to excel in every area of your life. Pastor Burke wants you to excel in every area of your life. I want you to come in to your sonship, to your daughtership, and to your heirship. Lift up your hands and begin to praise him right now. Begin to praise him right now. Begin to thank him right now. What incredible love. I, I tell you, when this came to me, I never, I really honestly never understood God's love for me. Honestly. I never understood the magnitude of the love in the love of Jesus that he would come and live and die such a gruesome life to live down here to, to, to take off his kingly robe and come down here with us and live a life so he could relate to live a human life so he would be easily touched by the feelings of our infirmity so that he could identify with my weaknesses my emotions my hurt and would die and endure the cross he did not have to endure the cross he could have said Bring me some angels, a legion of angels. God, I want to get out of here. This is too tough. It's too hard. But for the joy that was set before him, Mr. Norm, he endured the cross. In other words, the joy was you and I coming in to adoption, coming in to our inheritance, having everything that he had in heaven. He gave to us the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus that he would die such a gruesome death so that we could have what he had. Relationship with Father God, Daddy God. Do you get it, church? Am I the only one? I'm, 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 it, it, the magnitude that God would love us so much. He would give his son and Jesus would go through so much so we could have everything he has the life that he has oh my god free from sin free from the slaveries of addictions and and and, and sickness and and free from poverty and to have eternity with father god that he died that death so we could live with god forever otherwise if it wasn't for him we would be outcast. We would be alienated from God, separated for all eternity in hell. We're not second class citizens because we're Gentiles. We're children, sons and daughters of the Most High. You're going to drive your car differently. You're going to go to work differently. You're going to, you're going to shop differently. You're going to walk differently. You're going to expect the favor and the blessing of God because that's part of your inheritance. You're going to expect promotion. You're going to expect salvation. You're going to expect people being connected to you divinely. You're going to, you're, you're, you're going to, you're going to, God is going to supernaturally begin to direct your path and you're going to wonder why why am I here at this moment? And he's going to send some lost sinner, some prodigal that you hadn't seen in years, and he's going to connect you to him. 
and you're going to share with them the word, the love of God, the Father, and you're and they're going to melt and they're going to give their heart to the Lord. Your life is going to begin to be supernaturally orchestrated by the Holy Spirit because as many as are sons of God, they are led by the Spirit of God. When you awaken to the fact that you are God's son and your daughter, the Holy Spirit is going to begin to rise up. He's going to begin to rise up inside of you, and you're going to have such a keen sense of the will of God. Huh? A key, I'm prophesying. You are going to have here between now and the end of the year because of you coming in to your sonship, coming into your inheritance, you are going to have such an, a keen awareness of the leading and presence and person of the Holy Spirit, a relationship with Him that you've never had before, and it's going to make your head swim, saith the Lord. Father, we love you. Papa, Daddy, done my best. Done my best. Hope, I pray, dear God, they don't reject this. That they receive it. They get it in their spirit, Lord. They will praise. The Lord says you will praise me differently. <laughs> you will you, you, you at times will be driving to work and you'll have to pull off on the side of the road with tears of joy because my love for you will be revealed. It, it, will, it will overwhelm your breast. My love for you will overwhelm you. In such a way that, that you'll have to stop what you're doing. You'll stop in the middle of washing dishes. You'll stop in the middle of your work. And, and tears of joy will flood down your face. When you, when you realize how much I love you. How much I've done for you. How much I want for you. And when you realize my son and my spirit that, that I sent here to seal. To guarantee all this. My Lord, the Holy Spirit's been sent here, you'll see, to seal you, to guarantee your inheritance, saith the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're not born again, I, I, I'm just encouraging you to come to these altars right now and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you need anything from God, come at this time. If you need revelation, come at this time. We're going to pray right now. Come to these altars. Healing is part of the, your inheritance. Lift your hands and begin to praise Him right now. Come on, begin to praise Him. Dear God, I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, that you lay upon people's hearts right now who they're to call this week, who they're supposed to connect with this, this week, supernaturally guide their steps that they run into these people. It won't be by happenstance or by coincidence. It'll be by divine orchestration by the Holy Spirit. Father, right now I cancel the enemy over XL Church and I speak sonship and daughtership, the blessing of Almighty God. I pray over this church. I lift them up in the mighty name of Jesus. We cancel your assignment, Satan. We cancel the spirit of blindness. We, we, we cancel you in the name of Jesus. We bind every spirit of darkness that has hindered our sonship, every spirit of fear, every spirit of, every spirit, uh, 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 of, 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 of envy and strife and confusion. I bind you and render you harmless, ineffective, powerless, inoperative, and inactive in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Clap your hands and praise him right now. Give the Lord praise. Did you get anything out of God's word? Did you receive today? Do you know anybody that needs to hear the word of God? God bless you. We love you. Hallelujah. We speak the blessing of God upon your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Love y'all so much. Praise God. Woo, wow. Wasn't that good? <laughs>